Hey seniors, this is Miss Jasper. I just wanted to make this video to accompany the text that you're reading this week, the ones who walk away from Amalas or Omelis, whichever uh, you prefer to say. Um, this is my all time favorite short story or long story. It's a really good story. I remember I read this, it was either as a junior or a senior in high school. And I think it's one of the favorite things I read in my entire educational career. Um, so I'm very excited for y'all to get to read this. And um, I have a script. This is the only video I've ever made a script for because it's very, very important because I really like this story. Um, this is not a story that you read once and you're like, got it. I know exactly what's going on. Um, it's a story you're probably going to have to read two, three, maybe even four times as well as taking notes on the side. Okay, um, it's very high level. A lot of colleges use this story, but some freshman college courses, like if you're taking an intro to psychology or an intro to sociology course, they expect you to have already read this in high school. So if you are interested in taking stuff like that in college, not every college requires it, but I've talked to a lot of college students where this was required. Um, a little bit of background, Ursula Le Guin is one of the best science fiction writers of all time. Uh, she was the first big female science fiction writer since Mary Shelley. Um, she's won a lot of awards. She's had movies and TV shows based on her books and short stories. And a lot of modern day science fiction writers credit her as their inspiration. So she's a pretty big deal, okay? Um, some themes that she likes to use and themes for you to look out for are themes of morality. Okay, so what does it mean to be moral? Who decides what is moral? Okay, I want you to be looking out for that. Themes of the individual versus society and themes of happiness. Okay, so I want you to be looking for those themes as you read. Okay, now a little bit of a trigger warning. This is a very mature text. Okay. It's nothing too crazy. It's been read across high schools, across Texas, across the United States. It is a classic. It is nothing too graphic, okay? But there are some times where she kind of goes into a little detail about drugs or sex or abuse, okay? So just be prepared for that. Like I said, it's nothing too crazy. One or two sentences and then um, towards the end, it gets a little bit violent, okay? Um, things to think about that will help you with the assignments that you're going to have this week and next week. Pay attention to this very closely, okay, because I'm about to give you some answers to the assignment. Um, if you listen closely, you can't directly quote me, of course, but this will definitely, definitely help you, okay? Um, pay attention to the narrator. The narrator talks to the reader, okay? So you're going to notice the narrator isn't just talking to anyone. She's gonna to talk to you, the reader, specifically. She's gonna ask you questions. Okay, now of course you can't answer her, but she wants you answering these questions in your head. Okay, um, the narrator says the world is whatever the reader wants it to be. If the reader's ideal world is full of sexual promiscuity and drugs, that's the world that they're in, okay? If your ideal world is everybody chilling and reading books and drinking, Starbucks coffee, I, think, I guess that's my like ideal world. Um, that's what it is, okay? So she tells you, the reader, whatever you want this world to be, that's what it is, okay? So she is talking directly to you. Everybody's worlds are gonna look different, okay? Um, why would Le Guin, the author, make this choice? Why would she want you to be thinking of your paradise? Why would she want you to be thinking of your perfect society? Okay, why would that make a difference if it's your perfect society, my perfect society, or her perfect society? Does it make it easier or harder to walk away? Which you'll understand at the end. And does it being your perfect society give you a sense of guilt when you get to the end of the story? So the narrator actually plays a huge role in this story and I want you to be paying attention to them very, very carefully. The second thing I want you to look out for is guilt. The narrator talks about how this city is and how they feel no guilt. After reading, consider how this impacts the characters. 
Okay, so she says in this city, there is no guilt. But when you get to the end, you realize all the people here have made a choice. Okay, and you have to think to yourself, is it possible to make that choice with no guilt? And what kind of mental state do you have to be in to where you can make that choice and feel guilty, feel, not feel guilty even a little bit, okay? Um, and then lastly, I want you to think about would you stay or walk away? You have your perfect world, okay, whatever that is, but you have to make this moral compromise. Is that something that you could deal with? Do we make that moral compromise every day? Okay, so I want you to think, would you stay for the good of everybody or would you walk away into the unknown because of the secret that you find out? So that's what I want you thinking about before you read. I want you to pause the video right here and then come back after you read. And I'm gonna give you an example that may change your mind. So pause, I will wait like five seconds. Okay, so one thing I want you to think about are the little moral decisions we make on the day-to-day. -day. For example, there is a product called Mica, okay? Girls, if you use pretty much any kind of beauty products, chances are you use something with Mica in it, okay? Um, if you are interested in uh, sports cars that have the shiny little specks in it, Chances are you like cars with mica in it, okay? Now, mining mica is an extremely difficult process, and it's usually regulated to third world countries. And usually, we watched a documentary about it last year. Um, a lot of kids have to be the ones to mine this. I can't remember how many they said. It was somewhere between 50 and 200 kids die every month from mining this stuff that we just use for makeup right? So now that you know that, would any of you choose to buy a different car? Would you stop wearing makeup? That is a moral choice now that you know that you have to make. But we make these choices every day. We buy fast fashion. Um, we participate in predatory uh, systems, right? But do you have to make these moral compromises? Or if you didn't, are you constantly in a state of nothingness? Because you can't participate in anything without having to make some kind of consequence or moral choice, right? You can't opt out of everything. Um, but it seems as if every system we have, someone's the loser, right? So how do you reconcile those choices? Now, I'm not going to tell you either way right? But that's something I want you to think about is what choices are the most important to you? Maybe it's stuff that directly affects children or stuff that directly affects your community, right? So it's just something to think about. Um, as we go into looking into the story deeper, we're going to be making those choices for ourselves um, and you're going to give your position on whether you would stay or walk away if that's a moral choice you could live with and why. Um, if you have any questions, I expect to see you in office hours. Um, like I said, this story is very, very, very high level. If you come to office hours, I will talk you through it. Okay, we will make sure you get every point and why the author does everything that they do. Okay, so I expect to see you in office hours this week. Um, if you're having trouble, what I don't want is Friday night at 8 p.m. Someone to email me and say, Miss Jasper, I don't get this at all. Um, when I'm having office hours all week, okay? So please stop by. We'll talk about it. We'll work through it, and we'll make sure you understand. All right. Bye, guys.